All right, I'll call the Morehead Public Housing Agency December 15th, 2020 meeting to order. Um, I'm Greg Lemke, the chair of the board, if the others would like to introduce themselves. Michael. Alexa, the secretary. Shelley, city council liaison. Don, did you want to introduce yourself, Don? And it's Tony. Sorry Tony, about that. I just remembered I needed good. to share my screen, so I was preoccupied. This is oh, Don Bacon. I'm okay. the executive director with Moorhead Public Housing Agency, and in my office is Tony Vondal. She's the housing manager with Moorhead Public Housing. All right. Any agenda amendments for today? I have no amendments. Okay. Any sit to be heard as of yet? Not yet. All right. First item on our agenda then is uh, approval of minutes, a request to board approval of November 24th, 2020 meeting minutes. I'll move to approve. Second. Motion of second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Request approval for payment of bills. And the only thing unusual on the payment of bills is we did cut a couple of checks um, for our AMSIP and BCAL programs. Those two programs are funded through Ottertail County, and we actually are given funding in advance. And that, that contract is on a calendar year. And so we did utilize those programs at 97% of grant utilization, which is quite good. Um, but we did have a little bit of money around $6,000 between the two programs that we did return to the county um, because those funds were not spent for the grant purposes. Um, I think our number would have been even better, but we did have a number of people transition to the Housing Choice Voucher Section 8 program due to both Clay County HRA and Fargo HRA um, receiving a combined $1.2 million in mainstream vouchers through HUD. So that's all a good thing, but it just resulted in a lot of um, turnover within our uh, rental assistance programs. But still, all of that said, 97% is a pretty good utilization number. Other than that, everything okay. is um, pretty typical for expenditures. Okay, any other questions? Um, I, yeah, I just have a question. You said that we use 97% of the funds in those programs? Yes, between the two um, contracts, I think that was, it came to 97%. Okay. Can you put, that, a, can you put that in a historical context, context, say, as to where we were at when you assumed the position and say where we were at 10 years ago in terms of consuming the money? I can't, Michael. Um, I could take a look to see if the information is available, um, but I don't know what our trend has been, you know, prior to me in terms of grant utilization. Okay, ninety-seven percent is is quite good, and it seems to me that that's an improvement over the past. And if you could confirm that, I I would like that. Okay. Yeah, I can definitely take a look at that and let you know either way. Thank you. Any other questions? I'll entertain a motion then to approve the payment of bills. I so move. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is COVID-19 statutory and regulatory waivers. Okay, I'm just going to adjust my screen here so you can see the view. Um, this is an item that we've brought before the board two previous times, so it's kind of an ongoing topic that we're staying abreast with HUD about. 
Um, and just as a reminder, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, HUD is giving public housing agencies um, a number of options um, to waive certain regulations just because operations are much more challenging right now with the pandemic. Um, and so we need to document which options we are choosing as an agency. Um, and just recently, um, HUD released a new PIH notice, 202033. And that notice added a couple of new waiver options that were not present before. And they also extended a number of the regulatory waivers that were addressed in previous notices, um, but basically said, you know, that deadline no longer exists. We're going to extend the deadline out even further. Um, and so in this um, memo, I just summarized the two waivers that apply to us. Um, one has to do with the annual choice of flat or income based rent. And it basically the, the waiver allows families to be offered more options to make adjustments than they normally do. And we would recommend that we elect that waiver option just because of the pandemic. Um, we think people should have full access to that. Um, and then the second one had to do with um, the termination requirement for over income. This was discussed with the board at our last public hearing um, because it was a relatively new regulation from HUD. The board did opt that if somebody is over income for public housing after um, an extended period of like two years that they would be terminated from the public housing program. Um, and over income, I think it's around 110% of area median income. So it's a little bit higher threshold than the threshold to get into public housing to begin with. Um, we are recommending that we do elect for this waiver option, which basically just means that should we get someone who is at that over income limit, that we would not um, terminate them from public housing during the pandemic. Um, just recognizing that moving during a pandemic can create some safety issues for people in and of itself. Um, I will say that we don't anticipate ever using this because we very rarely have someone in this situation, but should it come up, um, I talked with Tony, our housing manager, um, we would recommend, you know, having the ability to exercise that waiver. So those are the two additions. And then I just included an updated grid for all of you so that you can see um, kind of the overall, these are all the waiver options that we have, um, when they expire, and if we as a PHA are um, utilizing, going to utilize this option or not. So any questions on this? And if not, I, my recommendation would be to kind of proceed with this newly revised plan. Can you clarify how HUD determines the end of the pandemic? Like when these waivers would expire, how do they determine that? You know, I don't know. Um, I have been in on some HUD calls and I think, you know, the, the deadlines are, are kind of, I think set not too far out um but maybe like a period of six months and then as they get closer to that they're kind of taking a look at where are we at with the pandemic you know what are the infection rates you know how is it impacting phas and then making decisions from there so it's probably um a, an ongoing thing that they're reviewing um so right now you can see the 630 of 21 is the most common um, extension that they've put forward. And hopefully by that time, we'll see a lot of people vaccinated and infection rates dropping, but I'm sure that they will, you know, reserve the right to look at that again and extend it further if needed. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? If if not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 
Opposed? Motion carries. The next item is camera upgrades. Just going to do a quick view change here. Okay, so this is an item um, where we're really noticing a need um, to be upgrading our cameras at our apartment properties, both Riverview Heights and Sharpview. Um, number one, our current cameras have a pretty low resolution, so it can be difficult to have a good view. And then um, number two, we would like to add additional cameras um, to have more um, coverage with our security cameras. And so what I'm asking the board is um, if we could move forward with a call for, for proposals. Um, it is difficult to outline exactly what we want because systems vary so much. So I'd like to take a look at, you know, have a call for proposals with vendors to say, here's what we need, what do you propose? And then we could take a closer look at our budget and make a decision with the board from there. Um, I will say that our current budget um, due to the clay public housing transfer does have a surplus of about $20,000 and that $20,000 is factored in after we have coverage to plug our deficit from last year. Um, so we do have some funding that we can work with in addition to the fact that we have um, continually strong public housing reserves. Um, so I do think there is sufficient resources um, to to look into this. Obviously, we have a lot of capital needs issues, which is an ongoing discussion that I know we're having, but I, I do think it would be very helpful to our operations to have some enhancements with um, camera coverage. So again, I'm seeing if the board would like to proceed um, with getting some proposals from vendors, and then we can take a look at cost at that time. Any questions for Don about cameras? It's, it's a good idea. We don't know what we're talking about until we get in there, I guess, to take a look and then we'll go further. So I'll enter the motion. Yeah, I move that we proceed with getting estimates on camera upgrades. I'll second. A motion a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is a strategic plan progress report and next steps. Okay, I'm just going to stop sharing this screen and find my PowerPoint here. Okay, so this is an update on the agency strategic plan. Um, the last report that we brought to the board was on August 25th, and I do have a couple of slides that just recap the board discussion and the feedback that we heard from the board. So we did take that um, and built that into our plan. Um, I did a more condensed PowerPoint this time where I brought down kind of the descriptions of the process we use to develop our strategic plan. Um, so this is a shorter amount of slides that really hit on our strategies, um, our accomplishments since August, and then what we're planning to do under those strategies for the first quarter of 2021. Um, and you can see our cover slide shows people that we serve. Um, and I put um, the award-winning artist, um, Lily Ann, her poster about what home means to her, along with our mission, vision, and values, because I think those really fit very well with her poster and the message of her poster. I don't know that I'll go through every strategy area, um, but maybe I'll just highlight you know, the main goals that we have for the first quarter of 2021 under all the strategies um, include developing a new five-year plan under our capital funding grant. Um, a new five-year plan starts with the 2021 capital funding grant. Um, releasing a call for bids for the Sharp View roof, which has increased in priority 
um, in the last year for that roof replacement. Our work with repositioning scattered sites, which I know we've had a lot of discussion about, <coughs> Maple Court acquisition, which we'll talk about later on in this meeting, um, renewing our Ross grant, as well as our Bridges grant. Um, the Ross application's been submitted, so we're waiting to hear from HUD. The Bridges um, two-year grant renewal, that RFP will be coming out soon from Minnesota Housing Finance Agency, so we're watching for that. So those are kind of our main areas. Um, so I just wanted to check in with the board and see if you have any feedback, if you have any questions. Oh, I do have to call your attention to under um, pursue new funding and finances. I actually have a picture of a, the, the end of the rainbow landing where my office is at the high rise. So I think that's a really positive sign for us. <laughs> It is. <laughs> That's where the crowd of gold is, huh? That's right. I'm still looking for it, but I'll let you know when I find it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so any feedback that you have on the strategic plan and our quarter kind of quarterly goals? A lot of good things happened. Yeah. On the Ross grant, you would hear on that, or is that? Um, we don't know. Um, I have looked back on previous award announcements, and I think the last one was awarded or announced in February. Um, and I just hope it's not any later than that. But yeah, we're kind of on pins and needles waiting to hear. It, it again, it, I know I've, we've talked about this, but it expires in mid April. Okay. Yeah, you'll, you'll hear the first week of April then, Don. Yeah, I hope not. I'll be having <laughs> dreams about it until I hear. <laughs> yeah. I saw the article in the paper too about Lily with you and Lily. And that was good. It's good to get the media and the notice for that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to send that to the board. So if you haven't checked out um, the extra, um, did run a story um, in addition to the KBRR story that I shared with you on Lillianne. So I know she's been excited about it as well. So it's great to I'm see. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Um, strategic plan. I don't have anything else. I did put it up for a resolution if you want to approve kind of our plan for the first quarter. Sounds good. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve the first quarter plan. I second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. I opposed motion carries. Then it's on to other business. Capital funding grant update. Yes, I think I tried to stop sharing my power. Here we go. I'm just not super quick on the sharing screen thing. Can all of you see the capital funding grant memo? Yes. Okay, great. So this, I didn't put this down as an action item necessarily, but I just felt like it would be a good time to show a full update to the board. Um, this has to do with our five-year plan for our capital funding grants. We get a grant every single year from HUD. Um, the board every five years approves a whole list of, of, need, of items um, related to capital needs for the agency. We put an estimate down on what we think it will cost. Um, but then we make adjustments from there based on the bids that come in, as well as any changes that might come up around, you know, one thing being more urgent and then another thing turning in, into something that's more urgent. So priorities. Um, we also don't know when we set our five year plan, what, how much money we're going to have to work with because HUD releases the amounts annually. Um, so this is the most current um, where you can see, you know, collectively we have four grants that are active, um, totaling $890,000. Um, and you can see grant by grant, 
um, what's been obligated, which means a contract has been signed, um, what you know our budget is at, and if the item is complete or not. So in the 2018 grant is very close to being closed out. We're just waiting for some invoices um, to close out that grant with HUD. Um, the 2019 grant um, is 100% obligated, um, but only partially expended. So we have some projects that are underway for that grant. The 2020 grant has a lot more open right now. It's a newer grant, um, so it's only 16% obligated and you can see the different items. Um, this is also where we do have some items that will be looking to move to the next five year plan because we won't get to them um, with this grant. I have learned that it is always better to put more items than you can get to in your five year plan um, because it just gives you maximum flexibility with um, working with your budget and also working with priorities that come up with the agency. And then we have a grant that's new to us that's from the Clay County HRA transfer. <laughs> that's a $56,000 grant. Um, and we, we don't have a specific plan at this point. Um, however, I think however, we could look at um, using some of those funds as leverage if we do a POHP application um, to Minnesota Housing. Um, window replacement at Riverview Heights would probably cost around $500,000, which is probably similar to the modernization project we did with our elevators. And we don't have a lot of money assigned to the window replacement at this point. Um, we did have to shift some money from that item to the sharp view roof item as that one is a little more urgent. So again, depending on that grant application, when it comes out, we can have further discussion about that. But at this point, I'm kind of flagging that as a possibility. So just again, wanting to bring that update to the board um, and just see if you had any questions about our capital funding grants. Any questions for John? All right. Uh, this next item, I didn't really provide much background to the board. Um, it's just on our agenda, but I, I did want to check in about um, some benefits that will be expiring potentially at the end of the year. And it has to do with emergency sick leave requirements with COVID. And this really ties into at our last board meeting, we talked about our COVID preparedness plan um, and the board did authorize me to make needed adjustments, but with the understanding that I would keep the board apprised. So one thing that I am planning to do, should it become necessary, is if this expires and there's some overlap before it would be renewed again, and we did have an employee who either you know, contracted COVID or was in some kind of COVID related quarantine or some situation that falls under one of these criteria, I would propose that they be able to access that added emergency sick leave so that we're not in a position where an employee got access to it in October, but then come January 2nd, because the, Fed, the federal government hasn't extended that benefit that this employee um, doesn't have access to something. So it's really looking at it from the standpoint of fairness with our policies. Um, I will say that these leaves do provide a tax incentive for the agency. Um, so if we if we were to if we were to proceed where we offered this coverage to an employee and the federal government failed to extend this. Um, we would have to pick up a little bit of cost, but it would be not substantial. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Um, if anyone does have any concerns, um, we can definitely put this to a board vote. Um, but if if the board is um, comfortable with this, I think just I wanted to kind of get a quick temperature read um, and see if you had any questions. If I don't know if you're familiar with um, these provisions or not. Any questions for Don or comments? 
think it makes sense. I mean, just because it expired doesn't mean the pandemic is over, obviously. We want to protect our workers as much as possible. So it makes sense. I agree. Yep. Hopefully it gets extended too by the government, but if not, you got to do the right thing. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, so I, Greg, I think I can go into an executive director update. Yep. yep. Great. Sorry. Um, just a few brief updates. One is that our 2020 fiscal year end audit is very close to being finalized. Um, so I do plan to have um, Brian with Brady Martz, um, who's presented to the board in years past, join us for our January meeting that is on his schedule. Um, and we can send you a audit report to review and approve at that time. And the audit went very smoothly. Um, we're just kind of fine tuning some things right now with our fee accountant. So um, I think we'll have a very good um, report for all of you on the audit. Um, another update is Tony. Our housing manager and myself have been talking about our ACOP, which is our public housing policies, um, stands for admissions and continued occupancy policy. Um, Tony's continued to, you know, just talk about that it's a, not the, we don't have, um, that there are some needed improvements in our current policy that could be made to make things a little bit more clear. And we've been talking with Nan McKay, which is a very, well-respected national organization that works with housing authorities and we've received a lot of training from them and they have a service where they can work with us to kind of give our ACOP a whole um, makeover so to speak. Um, this is something Clay County HRA has done with their admin plan which is kind of the the equivalent of an ACOP in for the section 8 program. So we're currently going to be looking at a proposal um, to work with them. It is a little expensive, but we were looking at just doing it under our training budget, um, just uh, given that we don't have a lot of opportunities to do a lot as many trainings this year due to COVID, so we could make use of some of the training budget funds that way. Um, so given that it's within our budget, I didn't put it forward for a resolution, but I know the board, a big part of your work is policy, so I wanted to kind of give you a heads up that we may be looking at some improvements um, to that ACOP that we would then bring to the board for approval with a public hearing um, later this year. So Don, you say these improvements are largely in the form of clarifications or are they actual policy changes? It would mostly be clarifications. Right now our policy, we find I know we find our policy to be um, too vague at times where it can put the agency at risk of being inconsistent in how the policy is applied. Um, it would also give us some peace of mind. I, you know, read all the HUD notices and, and really try to keep up and make changes to the ACOP whenever HUD um, makes any issues, any clarifications or passes new regulations. Um, such as the termination one we talked about earlier, but it would also give us a really clear, solid foundation for, you know, this is the most current based on all the HUD regulations. Um, we would work with a consultant to kind of go through where does a PHA have discretion um, and then what do you recommend? But anything that Tony and I recommend would be brought to the board and, and we would make it really clear about if there was something that's a real policy change from what we've done historically, we would definitely call that out and put that out in the public hearing as well so that the public could comment on it. Any other questions? My only last um, update before we kind of move into executive session and, and do some other things is I just wanted to say thank you. This is our last board meeting of 2020. Um, and so I just wanted to give a special thank you to all of you as our board members because it's been a particularly challenging year in working in public housing and um, we couldn't do anything that we do um, without our volunteer board. So we really appreciate um, 
your support always, but particularly this year. Yeah, and we we sort of appreciate you and your entire staff. We want to make sure that they know we appreciate all the hard work they're doing under these trying conditions also. Definitely. Thank you. All right. Hey, Greg, I need to make sure that Pete is on the line. I don't know. Oh, I think he is. Good. Okay. I'm on the line. Yes, Don. Great. Thank you, Pete. Okay. So I will entertain a motion to go into closed executive session for the purpose of considering offers or counter offers for the purchase of real property described as Clay County Parcel 58601-0200, located at 10 and a half Street and 7th Avenue North in the Henry R. Peterson edition of the city of Moorhead. Did you ask for more, Greg? Yes, I did to go into executive session. Yep. I, I move that we go into executive session to consider the purchase of real property. A second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. We'll go into executive session. So, Don said we're going to adjourn this meeting, but stick around because we have another one right after this for so all right so meeting is adjourned the regular meeting is adjourned okay so we'll call the Morehead affordable housing lc meeting uh, tuesday december 15th meeting i'm greg lemke the chair of uh, mark authority so dixon secretary Michael, Michael, Vice Chair. I'm Don Bacon, the Executive Director with Moorhead Public Housing Agency. And Tony Vondel, our housing manager is in the room. And I should say Moorhead Public Housing Agency is the property management company um, that works with Moorhead Affordable Housing LLC. Can all of you see my screen share? Yes. 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 It looks like we just have one item Great. on the agenda. That is correct. Um, and if you want just a little background um, with the application that was submitted to HUD for Moorhead Public from Moorhead Public Housing Agency to reposition the scattered sites. Um, it includes terms that the Moorhead Affordable Housing LLC would need to agree to. And those terms are listed on the agenda. This is verbatim what we submitted to HUD. And it basically is telling HUD that the Moorhead Affordable Housing LLC would continue to rent those units at a level that's affordable. So renting to low income households and maintaining affordability within these units. Um, so your resolution today as the Moorhead Affordable Housing LLC is essentially saying that you agree to these terms. I don't know about that dollar price. That seems kind of high. <laughs> Sorry to chip in yeah yeah all right so is there a a motion to approve the sale i'll move to approve the sale i second any further discussion Here, all those in favor aye 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 opposed Motion carries. Under other, I'll just share that um, we will be working with our attorney to develop um, an operating agreement that really spells out how often the LLC meets and a little bit more details. Um, that will be happening in January. The LLC doesn't need to meet very often. Um, I think it will be annually and more often depending on the needs of the entity. 
Um, and the, again, um, the LLC will be working with Morehead Public Housing basically as the property management arm for the properties. And I have no other agendas for the items for this meeting. And Adam, I have a quick question on the, as far as the makeup of the board for the LLC, is it just going to be bylaws or whatever that says it's the board of the MPHA also? It's not separate Correct. people? Okay. Correct. Okay. I have something from Facebook uh, to throw out there and see if you guys know anything about it. But Delray Williams mentioned a an affordable housing task force on Facebook the other day and tagged uh, Mayor Judd. D do you guys know anything about this? It's not something that currently exists, but that um, apparently there's some impetus for. And I mentioned to her that I would be interested in it. And she said that if it is something that uh, comes to be, she would mention my name to Mayor Judd, but I'm not, uh, I don't know anything about this other than her offhand comment. Is this anything that you guys are aware of? Michael, I saw the post. Yeah, I saw the post as well, but I didn't, I don't have any other background information about it. Okay. I don't know anything about it either. Greg, you know anything? No, I don't. Okay. Well, I'll maybe have some coffee with her or something and see. Yeah. If that was just really offhand or if there's really something happening. Sure, Doesn't she basically set up office at the third drop cafe or co it's the old Moxie job, I think. So yeah, yeah it'd be great if you could have coffee with her. Yeah. Delray's a good friend, so we'll see. See what's going on in that very busy brain of hers. <laughs> all right. That's all, all I right. have. All right. Sounds good. We are adjourned. Thank all right. you, everyone. Thanks. See you guys later. Yep.